So one of the things we talked about in the past was compression testing. We went over the very basics of compression testing, how to do a normal compression test. We did it on this engine, in fact, and those were the numbers we got. So now we're gonna do one step further. We're gonna go for something called a wet compression test. When we find a cylinder with a problem, if we have a cylinder that's lower than the others, one of the first things we'll do is a wet compression test. We're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of oil into the cylinder, and then we're gonna rerun that compression test, and we'll do it a couple of times. The idea being, if there's something that's really failed inside the cylinder, something big, then the numbers aren't gonna change that much. If we have a hole in the piston, if we have a badly burnt valve, the numbers won't really change. But if we have bad piston rings, what's gonna happen is the oil's gonna get in there, it's gonna coat around those bad piston rings and create a temporary seal. And you're gonna see the compression numbers come back up again. In fact, typically when you have bad rings, you'll find the numbers are just about the same as the good compression numbers would be on that same engine. So what I'm gonna do is run a real quick wet compression test on this engine, and we'll see how the numbers come out. So first off, I'm gonna run a dry compression again, just to make sure that my numbers are still where I left them. Okay, let's see here. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, where did that put us? That gave us. Oops. Let's try to flip around on us a little bit there. Woo! We're actually down just a little bit lower. We're down about 100 PSI. Okay, that was cylinder number four. Well, we're gonna try that one more time. Extra puff, we're about, we're about 105 on that. Okay, so. Let's make that 105. So now, to properly run this wet compression test, we're gonna pull the hose. We're gonna get an oil can right here. We're gonna put that down inside the cylinder. We're gonna put about two tablespoons of oil. You can see they're professionally measured. Okay, not really. We're gonna put our hose back in. Gauge back up. Now well, let's try this again and see what we get. Ooh, boy. Just a little bit different there. Okay. Let's see, what do we have? Looks like 210, 220, about 225. Okay, so our first test, wet. So we had 105 to begin with. Now we have 225. We're gonna run this one more time. And it came back with about 225 again. All right, so we went from 105 to 225. That jump is big enough. That tells us there's a ring issue in there. Now, I know that the rest of my cylinders weren't that high. If you'll remember from the earlier video, the one thing I mentioned that we need to do for a proper compression test is to warm up the engine. Now, since I'm shooting this for a video, this engine is not warm right now. So these numbers would be a lot higher had we warmed this engine up ahead of time like we were supposed to. However, you get the idea. The reason we don't do this on cold engines, the rings aren't fully sealing yet. The addition of the oil in that cylinder helped the ring seal. Our numbers came up a whole lot. If I added all of these other cylinders, they would come up too, and I just about guarantee that all of them would hit about 225. So again, the reason that we do a wet compression test, 
because we found a problem. We found a low cylinder and we're trying to find out why. If I would have added the oil and nothing changed, that would have told me I have a bigger hole in there, something else is wrong. I have a burnt valve, a hole in a piston, something very seriously wrong. Uh, if you have zero compression, probably not much point in doing a wet compression test at that point. Probably should just go straight to a cylinder leak down. Check the CLT video for that one. We'll catch you next time.